Welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn, and today's episode we're talking about the Tennessee Titans 2024 NFL Draft Class review, uh, looking at their production, athleticism, and other statistical factors of every single draft pick to see how they factored in and how they did in this particular draft class. Um, for those of you that are new to the channel, new to the stuff that I do, I do draft grades based on data grades. And you might be wondering, okay, what is a data grade? Well, I look at two main things. One, I look at draft pick approximate value. Every single draft pick in the draft has a certain value to it. So it's basically expectation. What is this player expected to become? And based on that number, I have to figure out, okay, how do I base that? I base it on data grades. And data grades are the production, athleticism, um, strength of schedule, strength of team, and every other statistical factor you could think of about a player on paper is boiled down into one number, and that number uh, gives you an idea of whether or not they could, they're going to become a starter or not. So if you want to check out more information about data grades, you can go to my Top 50 Prospects video, which is on this channel. Um, it goes over all the correlations. It goes over all the positions in terms of each one and shows you why data grades matter. But the biggest nugget of information you really need to know as a viewer right now is that 70 and higher is the typical rate for most long-term starters at the position, at all these different positions. So um, 86% to 90% of most positions usually had a 70 or higher data grade um, at the position. So um, though that, that's what you should be looking for. If you're going to be taking a guy to become a starter, they probably should have a 70 or higher data grade in many ways. Um, so that is what we're going to be looking at today. And also, um, there are also limiting factors to it. So you can kind of pause the video to learn more about this. These are all the things that can affect the data that are outside of my control. Um, so things that can essentially, these are blind spots. You know, These are things that can affect players that may test well or may not test well that improve their numbers. Um, and it kind of goes over all the reasons why that might be right here. Uh, that's just interesting for you guys to know, I think, uh, overall. And then, of course, we get to the needs. So these are the Titans uh, based on their approximate value scores. You know, when you look at the needs for them, um, they have a lot of dark green players, which that's NFL positional AV. That's how they actually have performed in their career. Um, and then the data grades are on the right-hand side uh, of the table here. But um, when you look at it, you know, they do need some help uh, based on this chart right here. I was able to kind of formulate uh, the biggest needs. I think the biggest need on offense based on data is wide receiver. Um, the biggest reason why is because of the age of the wide receivers. Um, Calvin Ridley is in his 30s. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is in his 30s. And both of those players, in terms of their career AV, have not been the best. They've been in the 90-plus percentile area to a certain extent uh, for some of their career, but not the most consistent bunch in that, in that manner. So... Wide receiver is a need. It's a, it, it is a need for them. Now, do they have other wide receivers that could emerge? Absolutely. Uh, but this is definitely something I, I address and I, I think is a need from a longitudinal standpoint. So it may not be a need this season, but I think long term, they need to start bringing in younger wide receivers. Then, of course, you get to defensive Ds. This is by far the biggest area that needs improvement. The edge position needs help. Uh, the cornerback position needs help. Uh, the safety position needs help. The, the, uh, all these areas need uh, assistance in terms of this. So that's definitely something that needs to be improved. Uh, so overall, biggest factors in terms of the final grade. Um, I, I grade the Titans based on a couple of different things. You know, Did they meet their roster needs? The biggest needs that I could see is wide receiver, edge, cornerback, safety, linebacker, and quarterback to a lesser extent. Um, did they draft good prospects? That's another thing that's really important. You know, just because you draft uh, a wide receiver doesn't really mean anything if that wide receiver ends up busting at the next level. So you need to draft good data prospects, which flows into the third thing, which is did they draft prospects that have, that have the data potential to outperform their draft status? So when you're talking about taking a guy in the fifth, the sixth, the seventh round, those prospects need to outperform their draft status. Otherwise, uh, they're not gonna really going to do that well. So the, how do you outperform your draft status? Well, you take prospects that have above average data grades. Um, when you look at the, the work that I've done, again, going back to the top 50 prospect video, uh, check it out because it goes over how correlative these data grades are. And if you are below 
what they need to be, it's not going to be good for you, okay? It's really not. I mean, there's going to be less of a chance of success. Are there going to be outliers? Absolutely. But for the most part, you're going to run into, into some issues if you take players that have really low data grades. Overall, we get to pick number seven. So to start the Titans draft off, they started really well. Um, they had a 99.61 percentile data grade tackle in J.C. Latham, offensive tackle out of Alabama. His floor grade is 94, which essentially is every single 99 percentile tackle taken in that range of 6 to 10 typically had a 94 percentile approximate value score in their career. So essentially, most of them were like long-term starting tackles or better. Um, balance grade wide was 96.92. So that's kind of like blending the ceiling with the floor to a certain extent. And pick AV is 93.44 out of 100. The overall pick grade for this, I would give them is an A. Based on his athleticism traits, 89 percentile in terms of the speed score. This is based on his estimated 40 yard dash. So it may not be 100% accurate, but uh, if you believe in him, if you're going to take a tackle at seven, he better run an 89 percentile 40 yard dash so i'm just gonna give them the benefit of the, of the doubt that this is what he did and based on that i think they performed well in terms of the selection uh next picked up we got pick 38 into vandre sweat defensive tackle out of texas his data grade was 74 percentile his floor is 57 his balance grade is 65 and his av is 82 percentile overall i would give this grade a c um, biggest issues is production. You know, even though he is a nose tackle, most great nose tackles, if you look at the all pro uh, area, the Pro Bowl area, and the starter area of this particular chart, um, you'll see that he's nowhere near those averages at the position. So he does have above average, at, you know, production traits, but not really where you want it to be, uh, even for a nose tackle prospect. You want them to be above average in terms of solo tackle data in many ways. And of course, when you get to his other market share traits, uh, forced fumbles was below average. Uh, his interception data was above average. And then his pass deflection data was above average, 80 percentile. So that was a really good number for him. I think for a, a, a nose tackle uh, prospect, his uh, pass deflection data is really impressive. I think it shows that he's somebody who can make plays at the line of scrimmage, which is a big thing for a nose tackle. And I think that's a good mark for him. Then, of course, you get to athleticism traits. So for, for his size... Uh, again, based on his size, because I do mass density athleticism traits, he tested really well. 86 percentile explosiveness and 88 percentile in terms of speed for his size. So he doesn't have great functional athleticism. You know, so in other words, he's not exactly like a really fast guy, straight line. Like he, he's not going to win any track meets, OK, uh, against other players. But for his size, he's very fast. For his size, he's very explosive. And I think those are decent things to have when you're talking about a nose tackle prospect is that he does have that lower body strength on top of being really big that could pay dividends for him long term. Then, of course, you get to his adjusted production traits. He's closer to a starter than an all pro or pro bowl player based on his adjusted production traits to a certain extent. Uh, but I would kind of put him in that sort of range. I think because he's a nose tackle, he's probably going to be more so a long term starter at the position. Uh, than anything else, but I do like his athleticism traits. I think his production is a little bit suspect, but I think there's enough here to, to project him as a long-term starter, but there are some risks here, which is why he got a C grade. Then, of course, you get to pick 106 and Cedric Gray, linebacker out of North Carolina. His data grade is 98 percentile, floor is 66, balance grade is 82, pick AV is 58.30 out of 100, with the overall pick grade of an A. Um, taking a look at his production traits, great solo tackle data, sack data, and TFL data, just fantastic. Uh, taking a look at his other market share production traits in terms of forced fumbles, pass deflections, interceptions, all those areas were elite as well. Cedric Gray was by far one of the most productive linebackers in this draft class in every single statistical category, but his athleticism is not the best. So he did have uh, above average explosiveness, above average speed for his size, but nowhere near like the Pro Bowl averages at the position, and he had a below average flexibility score. I do still think he will end up becoming a very good linebacker at the next level, but he does have some concerns in terms of his, uh, you know, his uh, athleticism traits. So we'll see what happens with him, but he was a tremendously productive player at North Carolina, and I'm excited to see what he does on the Tennessee Titans. And in terms of adjusted production traits, hits all the marks you're looking for in terms of that particular metric. 
There's really not much else to say. Cedric Gray is a great selection here, especially for the fourth round. Even though he does have athleticism, question marks, uh, this is pretty good value and pretty good in terms of the risk involved with him, athletically speaking. Then, of course, we get to pick 146 in Jarvis Brownlee Jr., cornerback out of Louisville. Um, his data grade or ceiling is 85.62. His floor is 40.44 with a balance grade of 63.03 out of 100. The pick AV is 34.36, but the overall grade for this would be a B. Taking a look at his market share production, he had 94 percentile in terms of solo tackle data, um, 36 percentile in terms of interceptions, and 96 percentile in terms of pass deflections. These are very good marks for him to hit based on this, his overall data profile. Uh, taking a look at his athleticism traits, 31 percentile in terms of explosiveness, 55.80 in terms of speed, and 68.08 in terms of flexibility for his size. So he had pretty decent starter level athleticism traits. He definitely uh, has some explosion issues, but overall good traits for him. Uh, and then, of course, you get to adjusted production traits, which is by far the biggest reason why he tested so well was his overall pass score was really good, you know, in the 90 percentile area in terms of his adjusted production traits, you know, production for his level of competition and for the team that he was on. His age is a little bit lower, but this is a pretty darn good profile for him. I'm really excited about this pick. I think he does fill a need for the Titans in many ways, and I think he'll be successful. Then, of course, we get to pick 182 and Jaquan Jackson, wide receiver out of Tulane. His data grade is 34.12. His floor is 25.5. His balance grade is 29.68 with a pick AV of 11.58. Uh, overall grade would be an F. Taking a look at his uh, market share production scores, 25 percentile in terms of uh, receiving market share, 26 in terms of total offensive market share, and then 35 percentile in terms of touchdown market share. Not the best production traits overall, especially when you look at the all-pro starter and pro bowl averages. Not where you want to be. When you look at his efficiency traits, not the best either, uh, slightly above average, but not not really where you wanted to want him to be either. And then, of course, you get to athleticism traits. He did have near elite speed for his size with below average explosiveness. So there are some concerns with his athleticism traits as well. But I do think he does have a profile more indicative of like a backup rotational guy in many ways. And then, of course, you get to his adjusted production traits, which is nowhere near the Pro Bowl threshold, the uh, starter averages or the all pro pro bowl averages at the position so again he's more so a backup rotational piece then of course we get to pick 242 and james williams safety out of miami his data grade is 92.24 projected floor is 40 his balance grade is 66 with a pick av of 40.63 out of 100 with an overall pick grade of being a so his overall data grade is very decent um, his uh, production was great 95 percentile solo tackle data 90 percentile pass deflection data with below average interception data, which is not the best thing ever, but you you know it is a decent all-around profile for him. And then when you get to athleticism traits, this is the main reason why he's in the seventh round. He did not test that well at all at Miami. Uh, you know, at his pro day, uh, 19 percentile explosion and then 38 percentile speed for his size. These are not the numbers that you want to hit for a safety like him, and is concerning for him. And then of course you get to adjusted production traits. He has a great age and great pass score. So you kind of have that. So he is risky based on his athleticism traits, but he has the production, he has the age, he has all the other sort of traits that you're looking for to where he might surprise. It's possible. So I think that's something that's a track uh, with him because he, he does have the production you're looking for. It's just the athleticism isn't really there, and sometimes that might work at the safety position. Then, of course, we get to pick 252 in Jalen Harrell, edge from Michigan. His data grade is 71.10 out of 100. His floor is 25.81. His balance grade is 48.46. And his pick AV is 3.09 out of 100. The overall pick grade would be a C. Taking a look at his uh, market share data, uh, below average except for his sack data. So he does have above average sack data. Uh, when you look at his other efficiency traits, he was at least slightly above average in terms of forced fumbles and pass deflections. And then athleticism-wise, he was above average as an athlete in terms of explosiveness and speed. So he does have some good traits. He's not the best player ever, but he does have some above average traits in production and athleticism, which makes him kind of a little bit of a value pick here. And then, of course, you get to adjusted production traits where he's not quite near the starter averages, but he's very, very close. So I wouldn't necessarily say that he's going he's gonna to become a long-term starter, especially for how low they drafted him at. 
But I think this is a decent all-around value pick. I think he might be a decent sort of backup rotational pass rusher, uh, if you will, based on his overall data. So overall, the final grade for the Tennessee Titans, I would give them is a C plus. Um, did they meet all of their roster needs? I would say yes and no. Did they draft good prospects? I would say yes and no. Did they draft prospects that have the data potential to outperform their draft status? Yes and no. Um, the Titans had the ninth best draft class based on talent and value, based on my grading system. Um, but they had too many picks that had no real data upside, which is concerning long term. On top of that, a lot of their really good data prospecting picks had some question marks in terms of athleticism um, that could either boom or bust at the next level. So even though they did have a lot of really good data grade players this year, um, there are some concerns from an athleticism standpoint uh, because it's so heavily weighted in terms of production and production for where they played in, in college. So that's going to be another concern to kind of think about with the Titans is athleticism-wise. They didn't take the most athletic players ever, um, and that might bite them in the butt long term. Overall, though, this is my general grade of the Tennessee Titans draft class based on data. To check out more of my work, you can go to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash jcoburn. Uh, check out my other work at X, formerly known as Twitter, at Geometrics. And, as always, purchase the 2024 NFL Draft Analytics Guide available today. Link is in the description. Check that out as well. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.